lunchtime murder case. Lunchtime murder case. Hey guys, welcome back to What That Happened with another episode coming to you from Jana's beautiful bedroom. <laughs> yeah, the construction site I'm living in right now <laughs> because we're uh, remodeling my room. Actually, like the whole flat, like the toilet, for instance. You haven't been to the bathroom. No. But, oh my yeah. god, you, can I even? <laughs> no, you can. Oh my god. No, no, you can. No, you can pee if you want to. Okay, you can feel when you want to. Okay. But like we paint the walls and everything. And it's the same. So there's an echo in here. And, Not that uh, bad though. Yeah, I like it. It's alright. Yeah. Okay, today we're up with another story. I actually like the last couple of days when I was remodeling everything and getting everything out of my room. Uh I kind of been you know, kind of was trapped in another Reddit hole. <laughs> you know. I was trapped in the Reddit hole and I um I found a very, very interesting murder case. Like we haven't done this actually. We never no, have done actually murder really. cases. But it was so, so interesting because, um, okay, it happened in America and the United States. Okay. It was actually like, uh, or people, it was very like a matter of public interest. When did that happen? In 1993. It's not that long ago. It's not that, oh, okay. It's kind of, it's kind of long ago. <laughs> I, I was three years old when it happened. No, two years old when it happened, turning three. But whatever, it's a murder case of Albert Joseph or Joey Fisher. Joey? Okay, Joey Fisher. And I'm gonna wear my glasses for this today because um, I took some notes. Okay, hit me. And otherwise I'm turning blind. And I actually do um, fasting right now. <laughs> Intermediate fasting. <laughs> and it's my time to eat, so I have lunch. So don't mind me. It's a complete um, Stephanie Soul's rip off. But yeah. Okay. Wait, you're gonna tell me about the story and eat at the same yeah, time? Yeah, because I'm, I have to eat right now. Love that. We love a mukbang channel. This yeah. is not a podcast anymore. <laughs> this is not a podcast anymore. This is a mukbang, mukbang channel. Okay. But seriously, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's just today. It's just today, guys. It's like what I'm eating today. It's like a sandwich. Hit us with the grilled cheese. <laughs> it is with grilled cheese. Okay, so what the heck did Joey Fisher do? You know what happened to him? What happened to him? Okay. It all happened in 1993. Okay. But actually, it happened before. Before? And there are like a few keynotes you really have to um, to know and to remind you of, okay. to know the whole story, to know the whole building. Mm -hmm. And it all happens in a, um, in a city called Rancho Viejo in Texas. Oh, in It's Texas. near Blooms, okay. uh, Bloomsbury, Texas. Okay. Um, near Brownsville, Texas. In Brownsville, Texas. It's actually near the Mexican border, which is actually initially very important for the whole story. All right. It's very, very... It's creepy. I read it <coughs> on Reddit <laughs> and creeped me out a bit, you know? Because it, it I'm mostly like, like okay. yeah, because on Reddit, when I'm on Reddit, I'm mostly in, into those um, ranger disappearance, national parks kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. We talked yeah, about yeah, that before. Like creepy stuff, like paranormal stuff, like, oh my God, children disappear. No one knows why, for instance, which is sad, but it happened. Yeah. But this is actually like a murder case, not a paranormal murder case. It was like, help me, by a human person. So, okay. Um, the story is about, as I said, Albert Joseph or Joey Fisher, who was actually 18 when he died, which is That's kind of so sad. Young. Yeah, he was actually a senior in high school. He was so close to graduate. Um, oh, man. <clears throat> and it was actually sad because the family like found him. Like the family found him. Oh, dead. no, the and this family was actually found really him. Sad. Um, what we have to say, like, in Rancho Viejo, I mean, though it's on the Mexican border. Yeah. Um, it was a very, I would, I would say, posh neighborhood they were living in. Like upper middle class? Yeah, upper middle class. I mean, of course, I mean, the parents were divorced and they had like new life partners, you know, yeah. stepdads and whatnot, stepmoms. But they all got along pretty well. But so they like, were all kind of well off. Okay, you know? yeah. And it was a very calm and very sweet neighborhood with a lot of, lots of shizzle to do, you know. Yeah. Like when, you, when you watch a film. And yeah. then you see like a suburbs and yes. everything is picture perfect, like ple not even pleasant though, but it's, everything is picture perfect. And this was like the neighborhood. Yeah. And he was very popular in mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. He's been considered like like a sarcastic dude in the school. Nobody was popular, he had lots of friends, like he was cool sporty. Uh -huh. And not the cool guy, not no? not the jock or whatever, you know, but he was a nice guy. You were like, Oh yeah, that's jo Joey, he's cool. Okay. I want to be his friend, right. you know? So everybody you know, basically knew him. Exactly, but, but he, he never... He, do, he wasn't like a person who's like, oh, that's Joey, you know what I mean? I get it, yeah. You know? Yeah. He wasn't hate, hated. 
Mm-hmm. And hated was more beloved than hated. Yeah, he was a so, well liked guy. Yes, and he was actually like, he was popular and he actually wanted to um, attend the University of Texas in Austin. So he had you know like a solid future. Plan. Plans. Yeah, exactly. He had fucking had plans. Um, but it all happened. Actually, the whole story um, happened one year before when he was a junior in high school. Okay. Yeah. Um, he was a junior in high school, and it all started uh, with his relationship to a girl called um, Christina. Christina. Okay. Yeah. Christina. Yeah. Um, Cisneros, but I just refer as Christina. Like okay. she was a, a year below. I think that's make it makes her a sophomore. I don't know. I can't American keep those things in my head. Systems. No, no, no. I no. really don't know. Um, but she's she was, younger. She's younger, of course. Okay. Like one year younger, and she's been. She was considered being. Very quiet, but still friendly. And her mom, which is a very, very prominent, very important part in this whole... Um, her mom? Case. Yeah. Hold on. Dora, as his Nettles, she was so in love with Joey. She was so fond of the relationship. So she was really happy her daughter was in a relationship with, with Joey? With Joey, yes. Okay. You know, to the point where she was like, he is like picture perfect, the picture perfect son-in-law. Like his family is well mm. off, she would marry in a very good family. Yes. Though she comes from a good family. She was married to a, um, a doctor in Brownsville. She was very high function, she was very active in the like in social groups and in church yes. and what whatnot, you know? She's like you know like Gilmore girls when you see those not not the Gilmore girls but the others when they be like Yes, yeah, I'm, I get I'm it. doing this now. Um I'm doing like um, my child is running for class president, and I'm gonna do everything. Or, so or technically, the families fit perfectly together, <laughs> as in their status <clears throat> and how people like them and everything. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, though she wasn't a Christian um, in church, you know, like very active in church. Yeah. She still, because she was Mexican, she still was. Um, her religion was heavily influenced, and mm -hmm. I don't want to butcher this name by the um, Cura then. Simo, which what? is a practice um, of religion and the folk medicine, like healing, rooted in Asian Mexican culture. Oh, uh, you know, okay. and yes, there's yes. like good and there is bad, you know, like bad magic, and it's called like witchcraft, which in um, Mexican and Spanish is brujera, if oh. I don't mistake. Okay. And she was very like. She believed in that. She believed, believed in that and she sometimes, because it was on the Mexican border, yeah. she would drive to Mexico because there was her, like a fortune teller called Maria. Okay, and she would Maria go Martinez. Maria. No, she would go there and read cards, you know, yes. and tell her like, oh my god, what brings the future? So it was a now. big part of her life, like, practicing that. Oh. <laughs> I'm cool with that, you know? Yeah, of course, people can, can believe in whatever they want, but like, let's see where the story brings us. I'm really curious. I like witchcraft. Yes. You know, like nature witchcraft. I asked a friend, and she's like witchy, mm -hmm. and she told me like, mm, there are different kinds of witchcraft or witch practitioners. Yeah. Or practitioners in witchcraft. And she was like, mm, they're yeah, like city witches, more who are like on the dark side. Mm -hmm. Some are like healing. Yeah. Like with nature and stuff. Like with herbs and everything. Like everything was great. Even like Joey gave actually Christina his family ring. <gasps> he did. It was actually a very old ring in his family. It's run in his family. He was like, here, take the ring. It's like super like 80s, 1980s, 1990s chick flick, you know? Wow. Okay, I didn't expect that. But like, okay. Like those teenage rom romance. Yeah, movies, yeah you know? Get it. Like, like, get my ring. In like Greece or something. It's like, like super sweet. It's super sweet, but yeah, cheesy. Yeah, cheesy, but oh, still so, sweet. So like, mm. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh so, my god. But one year later. One year later. And the next summer. Like they've been together for some, and then Joey broke up with Christina. <gasps> because, um, yeah, he doesn't. Have, he didn't have feelings for her anymore. I mean, it's normal. I mean, it's they're teenagers. teenagers. It's a teenage <laughs> romance. Like when I think about like when, when I was like 17, 18. With my ex-boyfriend back then. Yeah. I would never thought like I was going to marry him. How long were you guys even together? I always knew this. Whoa. We were together for three years. Yeah. Since, oh I was, my. since I was like 20 or so. And mm. then I broke up with him, which is personal, but who cares. And, um, but I always been like, because you have, I mean, of course they're like, those high school sweethearts, you know, have been together forever, and that's, that's, that's so, so rare. Sweet. It's sweet, it's rare, but rare. Come on. It doesn't know? happen to everybody. So. Oh, like, people break up in three months when they're teenagers. Come on. <laughs> mm? Yes. 
I've seen enough people not staying long together. Huh. But if you're like a teenager, what you gonna do? Like commit early on in your life? I mean, mm. sometimes it works, sometimes it clearly doesn't. The Dora. <laughs> what did Dora and Ma do? She wanted that to happen actually, that they're gonna like commit. But she Joey, wanted them to stay together. But Joey broke up with her. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. Which is terrifying. I mean, of course, Christina was devastated and she would cry. Yeah. And she was like, please, please. Yeah. Let us look at things out. Christina? Yeah, but. Yeah, so she still had feelings for him. Yes, obviously. of course. She was heartbroken. Mm. But Dora. I was thinking of Dora at least, but which is good. Don't even. <laughs> I don't even. And, um. I don't want to say she got pissed, but she was very like upset, upset and obsessive at the same time because she yeah was initiating some things. Like she would call, for instance, like Joey and be like, "Come on," she would call him. That's so creepy. Work yeah. things through and oh. whatnot, you know. And oh. the thing is, like Christina actually didn't want to give back her, the ring. She still had it. She still had it because she was like, um, "No, it's mine I, I now." Think it's like, no, I think it's like because. When she would give back the ring, then it's really over. It's, real. it's like over for real. Oh, this is sad. I wonder. Oh my god, what the heck is gonna happen to Joey? Hmm? Is Dora bad news? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she even called him once, like begging him, was willing to pay him money. You know, like five hundred dollars. No, mm -hmm. I'll give you some money. Stay with my daughter. Yeah, like, oh. like hey, my sister. She never had a date. Here's as fifty bucks. Go up with her. Kind of like. Stupid things. It is stupid. Not because I wanted to, them to reconcile, but he had enough, you know. Yeah, of course. Because they didn't want to be together with him, with her, and it's totally fine, you know. But you can't force somebody. Yes, but actually, like she went to her consultant, to Maria in Mexico, and was like, "Hey, oh my god, what can you do? <gasps> Not reading cards or whatnot, but maybe can you cast a spell on him? Oh my god. You know, to fall in love with um, Christina." Yeah. Oh my god, did she say yes? Mm -mm. She said no. Mm -mm. <gasps> because you don't mess with love. But yes. You cannot cast a spell on someone who doesn't love you have, or doesn't have like, or don't have genuine feelings for you. Yes, yes, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then? But she was like, <clears throat> I mean, how much would it cost? You know? And she was like, I don't get money for this because you cannot play with feelings. But then most of were like, but how much money? And how much does it take? To be Johnny up, Joby up, and and she was like, "Well, that's a very tricky situation right now. I'm just a consultant. I'm just a fortune teller." No, and then she was like, "Well, I know someone who knows some people," and then another third person came in, saying, "Is Daniel? Daniel enters the stage. Okay. I won't say his full name because it just took so long." Okay, but Daniel. He was very desperate because his wife wanted to get a divorce. And he went to Maria and be like, hey, could you please cast a spell on her? She fell back and loved me. And Maria was like, no, I cannot do this, you know. But maybe you can do other things, you know. So, like spirits and whatnot will help yes, you. Yes, yes. You know, and he was like, I do whatever it takes because desperate people may take desperate measures. They do desperate True. things, of course. True. Maria was kind of functioning between Daniel and Adora yeah. as a middle person. As a middleman, you know, and okay. Daniel actually knew her, like guys who were a bit sketchy and they who looks like, like a t who looked like a typical Mexican person. So when they would drive back to Me uh, Mexico, yeah, like, there would be no one. For instance, like in Korea, it said that when you want to kill someone, yeah, hire a Chinese hitman <laughs> because when they go back to China, like the trace is very blurry because everybody. Hmm. You know? Okay. All right. So the plan was to like beat Joey up to scare him. Yeah, to kill him. To what? To kill him. Curse? <clears throat> kill! Mm -hmm. So Daniel contacted two hitmen in March 1993. Joey was actually about to go to school. <clears throat> he was driving with his mom's car and then he went in. Just a normal morning, you know? Yeah. Around like 7 a.m. Yeah. Very normal morning. And he was like, hey, mm, I'm off. But then like the windows were dusty. So he, um, was grabbing a hose to clean them. Yeah. And you and then boom. They shot him? They shot him. Like two shots were fired. <gasps> one hit him in the head, one like in this breast area, and he was dead. Immediately. Kinda. Of. 
because those people obviously knew what they were doing. This you know, they knew so like, I mean, when we were shot in person, and they've obviously been very, very close because yeah. um, there are different kind of um, types of shooting a person. Yeah. So it was very like, straight in. Oh my gosh. And because they were living in an area where they're like palms and whatnot. Yeah. So his brother was at home as well. Yeah. So this mom thought, or oh, maybe there's a palm or something was crashing onto one car because there was they were that nice, you know? Yes. So then his brother was like, hmm, that's weird. Why? Your car is still in the driveway. And then like he didn't drove off to school. Yeah. And then mom was like, hmm, that's really funny to swap. So they went out, and then they saw Joey laying on the ground. Oh my you know, god, laying on the so f- bad. Laying in the garage, you know. Yeah. And a puddle of blood in his own blood because the hose was still running. Ah! You know? And they was like running through the driveway, like into the street. I mean, they called their dad. His dad immediately because he was not living far away. Yeah. And they wanted to know, like, who the fuck did it. And it was a mystery, of course, at first. What, did, what, what happened to Christina? This is so horrible. It's getting worse. It's getting worse? Mm-hmm. The justice and shit. And what happened? So, his brother was actually was like, hmm, when there was this band, I saw a guy. Yes. Who looked, looked Mexican. Okay. And it was like the driver's license with the four numbers. Yes. But they didn't look like driver's license in America. He gave it in America. Yeah. My baby. So, of course, the cops came and they asked him, you know, and then yeah. they're, they're running like driver's license all around, and they'll be like, hey, that's actually a driver's license, maybe from Mexico. He had the numbers in his head? Mm mm. Or he just saw, like, it looked different? Yeah, different form. Okay. Now they're like, mm, weird. All right. Um, they did some investigation. Mm hmm. The long story short, because Maria entered the stage again and she was like she confessed essentially everything God she confessed everything and she was like I was working as a middleman for the Stanley dude and for Dora yeah and everybody was like outraged because why would she do this just because the boyfriend of her daughter broke up with her like girl, but she was very obsessive. She was so weird, and this lady, and she looked creepy as hell. She did creepy as hell. So there was a trial, of course. Everything, la 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 la. And Maria was sentenced to like in the long run to twenty years in prison. Twenty. Yeah, but it was like she was sentenced. Everything, everyone was actually sentenced in nineteen ninety four because it took fucking long actually to do like. Uh, to go on trial and court and everything. Yes. And then they were actually sentenced. Dora initially. Because there was like um innocent. Because there was um a failure like in the system and whatnot. They said Dora is innocent? Kind of. But four years later in nineteen ninety eight, she was finally sens- sentenced actually. How many years? A long life. Ah <gasps> Sentence. But why so late? Because there was like because there was like a failure in in the system, I guess. That's insane. Mm-hmm. That's so that insane. Overturned due to legal techni- uh, technicality. How does that make sense? She was and the then one. Then in nineteen ninety eight, again she was con- um, convicted by a federal court. Yeah, thank yeah, God. Yeah. It was her plan to do all of this. She wanted him dead. And the other guys that were um, sentenced to fifteen years in prison in Mexico. 15, that's yeah. not that much. <laughs> it's not really that much. For hitting, shooting and killing somebody, that's insane. Mm? Wow. I was like, wow. Like the whole night, I was like, why? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't make sense out of it. This is so freaky. But like, Maria gets sentenced to 20 years. And Dora is innocent at first. <laughs> How insane is that? And she's out. Awesome. Dora. What um, the um, Maria. Because she acted just as a middleman. She never been like, hey, I paid this. I did this. I mean, I understand that Maria was convicted, but like 20 years... But Dora, she is like the sketchy ass. They're all sketchy to a certain degree. Like some sketchier than the other. 
But we don't know anything about Christina. Did she know that her mom was doing that? I think she, of course she didn't know. I think she, she knew that her mom was like possessive and Yeah, she had, and crazy. she had got to know about that. She should have known about that. Exactly. I mean, it's your mother. You're together every single day you see each other, you know But it's so fascinating because in America, there's always like those stories. You know, because on Reddit, there were like other subreddits and be like, yeah, I know the story too. Like, I don't get it. Americans, please, why? Like, there's so many serial, not, not just serial killers, but like those incidents, you know? Like obsessive people. Obsessive people, but just murder cases that are so random. So weird. Like, why does why did it happen, or why does it happen? When you watch television, yeah. for instance, when they be like, "Women that snap," you know. Yeah. Of course, the woman that she killed her husband because he did something wrong or something shitty. I get it, but it doesn't mean like get a divorce, girl, but don't kill your fucking husband. Easier said than done, I suppose. But then again, killing is easier said than done. I. So insane. I don't think that killing is actually very easy because it's not. you're committing a crime essentially. Of course. And you know that you do it. I mean, you can be like, oh, I have mental uh, uh, health problems. I didn't know that I was doing it. Kind of like this. You know? I mean, I guess but there are that many cases in America because you have to imagine America is huge. It's a huge country. Yeah. I mean, if you compare, like, is Europe even as big as America? I'm, I'm not, not even sure. sure. Like, and no, no, I think it's bigger because. Um, Russia, yeah, it's so it's so big. But like America has a lot of citizens too. It has a lot of states. It has a lot of citizen in those states. So I, I understand that there's like so many random, weird, many murder cases popping up in America. There yeah. are not that many in Germany if you like really compare it. But then again, we're a tiny country. <laughs> Super great lunchtime mystery. <laughs> Yum. It should be a thing. <laughs> Lunchtime mystery. Lunchtime mystery. <laughs> I make it a theme. <laughs> this is like new on our channel. Lunchtime mystery. I finished with my story for today. And yeah. I still have half a, of a sandwich. Don't worry. I have another murder case. You can eat in peace while exactly. I present it that's our to second, all of us. That's our second installment of lunchtime mystery. <laughs> lunchtime mystery murder and we, case. And we're gonna take... <laughs> like mukbang mysteries. <laughs> MM. <laughs> no lunchtime mysteries. It's a new playlist. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna force it to. It's gonna be a thing. It's gonna be a thing. I'm okay. gonna make a playlist out of this. I'm not opposing it. I think no, it's a good no, idea. So we're gonna see you next time. We're gonna wear the same clothes. I guess. You know. Yes, we're gonna. It's the same. Seriously, and think about like, would you kill a person? Just because they would break up with you. Not even with you, with your daughter. With your daughter, yeah. <laughs> People are crazy.